Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B reporting for the media speaks. Now let me say up front that as you can hear as I battle this uh, this uh, recording, there is a website that thinks that it's going to be a good idea to make itself refresh. Now, if a website, especially when I'm live on air, if a website thinks that it's a good idea to uh, keep refreshing, do you think I'm going to promote them on air? Nope. And there's one story tonight, I'm not going to tell you where it's from. Because this is the pissed off face. I'm pissed off because people at this site need to learn how to build a website that doesn't piss off people that cover their news. Alright guys, Sam I B reporting for The Media Speaks. Fine in the morning. You have no idea the amount of work it took me to do this show today. Everybody that could possibly drive me freaking crazy in one day has managed to do so all on the same day. And I, I'm telling you people, I am at like wit's end, so you're welcome to join me at the uh, the Media Speaks. Click on the link. You're welcome to join me. Facebook has the link. If you have a, uh, if you have a camera, by all means, please join me. If you want to talk to me, we'll talk. If you want to debate me, we'll debate. If you want to fight me, Today's probably not the best day to do it because I'm ready to fight you. Alright guys, uh, enough personal info. I am having a bad day. I'm going to make sure that all of you have a wonderful day. This is uh, from the National Review Online, nationalreview.com. Human exceptionalism. Assisted suicide is a turn on. And this is a problem for me. Because, you know what, I'll be the first to say this. I am a horror movie fan. By fan, I mean the true definition of the word fanatic. Chop them up, slice them up, cut them up, saw, Texas Chainsaw, Massacre, you name it, I have watched it. I can watch uh, Alien and eat a bowl of spaghetti at the same time without being sick. I have no problem with it at all. Zero, not a zilch. If you don't know fact from fiction, then you're an idiot and I don't care what happens to you. That's just me. However, I watched a, uh, a Faces of Death once. For those of you that don't know, Faces of Death is a, uh, a, a, a series that photographs or films people's death. I watched it because I was curious. I never watched another one. I know you see the long hair, you see the tattoo, and you think, oh, he's a gothic freak and he likes to watch death. Actually, I'll probably never watch it. Um, not a fan of it. I like my fictional horror films. I'm not grossed out by watching people die, but I think there's something wrong with you if you do, in fact, like to watch that. Do I think it should be illegal? No. Do I think you're bent in the head? Yes. Well, this goes along that same vein, and we're going to go ahead and read this real quick. It's by Wesley J. Smith. Um, assisted suicide, a turn off. Does assisting suicide have a sexual or perhaps better stated sensual component for some people? I have thought, he writes, it might ever since reading A Chosen Death by assisted suicide advocate Dr. Lonnie Shavelson. Shavelson, who witnessed Sarah, described as a hemlock society leader, murdering, quote, Gene, who changed his mind before dying, only to have Sarah put a plastic bag over his head. Demonstrating Shavelson's moral hollowness, he not only didn't stop the woman from killing Gene, but didn't report the case to the police. 
If that doesn't bother you, welcome to Sam's list of people that are bent in the head. I'm going to go off. But this is part of Shevelson's account. I want to focus on, for the moment, why does Sarah do it? He quotes her vexing exorcismity about what it is like to assist the suicide of Naomi from his book on page 75. I firmly believe now the most intimate moment you can share with a person is their death. More than sex, more than birth, more than anything. I was at the deliveries of my four grandchildren, and my experience with Naomi's death was above that. That's because you are a twisted, bent, useless human being, that's why. That's because the things that turn you on are exactly the kinds of things that destroy our nation. And before I go on, guys, I am not a prude. I'm in a band called Passing Time. I'm, I've worked at a strip club. I've had sex with more than one person at a time. I am not your moral compass. Yes, I am a Christian, and I will be the first Christian to tell you that I am probably the worst Christian that has ever lived. I believe that Jesus rose from the grave by himself, by his own accord. I believe that he is God. But if you think that means that I think that I'm better than you, no, no. I, I, I may have better judgment than a lot of other people, but I'm not better than anyone. As a matter of fact, I'm probably a whole lot worse. So just so we have some kind of a common ground here, I am not preaching to you. I am telling you that this is disgusting and it makes me want to throw up because this person is much worse than I think that I am. How's that for fair? It's what Sam thinks. And as I read, she's probably a whole lot worse than you too. There are something very sick about that. It's written here at a National Review. Very sick. Now the international assisted suicide rock star, Philip Nitschke, who famously said suicide pills should be available in supermarkets and allowed to quote unquote trouble teens admits that helping people kill themselves gives him a sexual thrill. This is from the Canberra Times. In a recent autobiography, Philip Nitschke makes an astonishingly frank disclosure. He says that immediately after helping people kill themselves back in the mid-1990s, he had an overpowering need for sex. In the first set of page proofs from Damned If I Do, set out by Melbourne University Press, Nitschke was found at his most candid. After performing my role in the death, he said, I had an urgent and pressing need for sex. He was having an affair with a journalist, and the sex, he says, was frantic and sometimes desperate. Uh, the author writes, I wonder if Jack Kevorkian was similarly turned on. Guys, let me tell you something. My dad was an LPN, God rest his soul. He was fighting for his life at the time that he died, but unfortunately, he didn't choose to fight for it in time. He waited too long, and now he's no longer with us. And that was his mistake. What I'm saying is that if someone wants to die, I don't have a problem with it. That's between them and God. If you're listening to this and you want to die, I would rather that you contact someone. If you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me. I won't tell anybody. I'll keep it between you and I. I won't call the police or anything. I'll do my best, and if you die, I try. I'll put that out there openly. I'll do my best. Don't kill yourself. Talk to me. And uh, if I can't change your mind, then I try. But if you kill yourself when I try, I'm not going to go and have sex afterwards because I think that you turned me on. Guys, I reported on this because it's important. Eugenics uh, killing uh, uh, large amounts of people uh, to a finished... Uh, I call it eugenics this. 
the murder of one or more people for the belief that the ends justifies the means in their death. That's my definition of eugenics. Eugenics people are messed up. Okay, I'm libertarian. If someone wants to kill themselves, that's between them and God. I don't condone it. I don't ask people to do it. I'll say as somebody who in the distant past, a very distant past, was rather unstable, um, it's not a good idea. And I've been there, you know, and the hesitation marks as it were. I get it. I get it. Okay, when my, when my ex left me, my wife, I had to freak out and now I'm okay. And I'm glad I didn't do it. Had I done it, that would have been between me and God. But if somebody got turned on by it, there's something wrong with you. I'm going to tell you what, I mentioned this because eugenics and suicide and killing yourself for a greater good is being promoted as a great romantic that's just the way the system wants to control you, by making you believe it. So don't do it. Plain and simple, this is sadistic. This is wrong. And no matter how you feel about your life or somebody else's, you know. You know listening to this, whatever conscience you have, you know that it's wrong. Uh, this is from nymag.com. Final tally, Americans were 12 times more interested in Miley Cyrus than Syria. I'm sure you can tell by looking at me that I am, uh, I'm not a prude. I'm really not. I just admitted, admitted to all kind of kinkiness a minute ago. I'm in a band as threesomes, foursomes, moresomes. I don't care. I love the Lords of Acid, which is the most perverted band ever. I love Combi Christ, they are the second most perverted band ever. My problem with Miley Cyrus is that she is a totally un untalented hack. She has no, no real talent that anybody that can carry a tune in somewhat small degree Anybody that can sing at all has as much talent as she does. The, what pisses me off about Miley Cyrus is as somebody who despises pop the way I do. I saw her on Letterman a number of years ago, and she actually spoke like someone who had a brain in their head. And unfortunately, she has sold herself out. She is a sellout. Even a pop artist can be a sellout. And she is. Listen to this idiocy. Syria, by the way, could very easily lead to World War III, okay? It could lead to things that would destroy our life as we know it. And yet Miley Cyrus gets the hits. Listen to this. The Miley Cyrus captures more attention than escal escalating war in Syria is by now conventional wisdom. But an exhaustive survey of news sources now reveals exactly how much attention Miley steals. Americans view 12 times as more pages about Miley Cyrus as they did about Syria, even though the news sources published 2.4 Syria uh, articles for every one about Miley. And it goes on to mention that for every one click, that Syria news got, which could lead to the death of thousands in Syria, could lead to the death of American soldiers going in there to try to unwisely fix this because our idiot president seems to think that it's a good idea, could lead to World War III if Russia or China were deciding uh, to, to come at us in some way. Whether or not you think America should be in this or not, Miley Cyrus and her limited ability, and I'm going to say up front, I have more talent than Miley Cyrus. Yeah, you're damn straight, I said it. I'll stand by it. Um, Miley Cyrus got 12 times as many hits as anything about Syria. Here's some good news. I'm not going to say exactly... Um, where it's from, 
because I have two news stories from a website that felt that it would be wise to make it refresh. So I'm not going to say where the article's at. Take it for building a stupid, annoying website. Marijuana fans cheer Tuesday's historic Senate hearing. And that is the name of the story. If you type that in, you'll find out where it's from. I'm not going to tell you where it's from because their website has pissed me off. And if you piss me off, it's all downhill from there. Guys, uh, here we go. The Senate Judiciary Committee will open landmark hearings Tuesday in the nation's capital that could ultimately lead to the legalization of marijuana or at least resolve the deep divide between a federal government that has sent mixed messages on prosecuting users and the growing number of Americans who want the drug to be illegal for medical or recreational use. Requested by its committee chairman, Senator Patrick Leahy, a Democrat from Vermont, the timing was triggered by the announcement last month uh, by U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder that federal authorities no longer will interfere as states increasingly adopt laws to either allow medical marijuana or legalize the drug entirely. Who's with me on that this might be the only good thing Eric Holder's ever done since his uh, handling of arms smuggling has led to the death of many? In calling for the hearing, Lee himself questioned whether at a time of severe budget cutting, federal prosecutions of marijuana users are the best use of taxpayer dollars. Clearly, marijuana is, a, uh, is for the most part a victimless crime. I know. On the really large shipments once in a while, people get shot over it. But the truth is, uh, uh, that wouldn't be happening if it was legal. Lee favors legalization, said Dan Rival, director of federal policies for the nonprofit Lobby Marijuana Policy Project in Washington, D.C. Rival said that he hopes for a breakthrough in the hearing that would lead to changes in federal banking laws, allowing marijuana sellers to accept credit cards and checks, not just cash. And that would, it goes on, do a lot to legal, legitimize, excuse me, the nation's fledgling marijuana industry, safeguarding transactions from the risk of robberies, and smoothing the route away from the black market and Mexico's cartels. What's happening is they're making it impossible for people to actually go ahead and bring their the profits to fruition. They have to bring large amounts of cash from point A to point B. Point B may be the bank, may be their house. That opens them up for robbery. And uh, the only trouble with marijuana, it tends to be in the way that uh, the law tries to stifle its popularity. But the biggest question, the elephant in the room, is that we have an administration that's essentially working around the federal law to allow states to legalize marijuana. What we should do is just change federal law, just legalize marijuana, he said. This fall, Michigan lawmakers, wisely I might add, could take up bills that would ease laws on marijuana and widen medical users' access to it. Here's the bottom line, people. States, according to the Constitution, trump the federal government in any issue that is not directly written in the Constitution. That means that according to the voters, not according to federal law, according to the voters, states decide what is legal in their states. And what I just read to you is proof that an overreaching federal government is making this a problem, not the rights of the people. Marijuana is not a gateway drug. That is a lie. Uh, that's like saying that because you drank water growing up, uh, you now became a pothead because uh, you, you, that's the same logic. You use pot, so now you use crack because you wanted a greater high. You drink water, but now, you know, water just didn't quench your thirst, so you wanted to be more thirsty, so you smoke pot. Point is, it is not a gateway drug. It is not physically addictive. Marijuana is only psychologically addictive. And that is why it should be legal, among many, many other reasons. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on the BudK ad. When you click on BudK, you will be helping the media speaks. You'll be helping the correct news. And I'm going to go over some of the really cool things that are on their site. 
Black Legion Wilderness Survival Knife, 1999. If you ever need to stab anybody, this will get the job done. Check M10M mask, gas mask with filter and drinking tube at $24.99. When's the ta last time you saw a gas mask with a drinking tube? Nice invention, less than 30 bucks. Um, the Undead Apocalypse Katana Samurai Sword, $29.99. Any anything, anytime, anywhere. Marine Recon Bowie Knife and Sheath, 1999. They got everything at Bud K. Um, I've had some martial arts training, and I can tell you right now that their katanas are beautiful. Um, U.S. Marine 1942 leather neck sword and sheath is also beautiful. Now I'd have to use that a little bit differently than I was trained to use a katana. But $29.99 is practically giving that away. I know enough about swords to be able to tell you that. So guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on the Bud K ad, and when you do, you will be helping and The Media Speaks. You'll be helping the correct views, and we will be very thankful. So please do so. Guys, Reason.com, a font to discourage NSA snooping. And the last three articles are really good news. It's news that talks about how people are starting to rise up because people are getting more and more furious at the fascism, communism, and overreach of governments all over. This is from 